What is a Pearson correlation? The Pearson correlation analyzes the relationship between two variables. For example, is there a relationship between a person's salary and age? In this scatter plot, every single point is a person. If the relationship is confirmed in this example, salary can be predicted by age using a regression. But beware, it's not always that easy. There must be a clear causal relationship for this. Just because there is a correlation, you can't tell which way the relationship is going. So with the help of Pearson correlation, we can measure the linear relationship between two variables. Here we can determine how strong the correlation is and in which direction the correlation goes. We can read both in the Pearson correlation coefficient r, which is between minus 1 and 1. The strength of the correlation can be read in a table. If r is between 0 and 0 0.1, we speak of no correlation. If r is between 0 0.7 and 1, we speak of a very strong correlation. A positive correlation exists when large values of one variable go along with large values of the other variable. Or when small values of one variable go along with small values of the other variable. A positive correlation is found, for example, for body size and shoe size. The result is a positive correlation coefficient. A negative correlation exists when large values of one variable go along with small values of the other variable and vice versa. A negative correlation usually exists between product price and sales volume. The result is a negative correlation coefficient. How is the Pearson correlation calculated? The Pearson correlation coefficient is obtained via this equation, where r is the Pearson correlation coefficient, xi are the individual values of one variable, e.g. age, yi are the individual values of the other variable, e.g. salary, and x dash and y dash are respectively the mean values of the two variables. In the equation we can see that the respective mean value is first subtracted from both variables. So in our example we calculate the mean values of age and salary. We then subtract the mean values from each person's age and salary. We then multiply both values. Then we sum up the individual results of the multiplication. The expression in the denominator ensures that the correlation coefficient is scaled between minus 1 and 1. If we now multiply two positive values, we get a positive value. So all values that lie in this area have a positive influence on the correlation coefficient. If we multiply two negative values, we also get a positive value. Minus times minus is plus. So all values that lie in this area also have a positive influence on the correlation coefficient. If we multiply a positive value and a negative value, we get a negative value. Minus times plus is minus. So all values that lie in these ranges have a negative influence on the correlation coefficient. Therefore, if our values are predominantly in these two areas, we get a positive correlation coefficient and thus a positive relationship. If our values are predominantly in these two areas, we get a negative correlation coefficient and thus a negative relationship. If the points are distributed over all four areas, the positive terms and the negative terms cancel each other out and we get a very small or no correlation. But now there is one more thing to consider. The correlation coefficient is usually calculated with data taken from a sample. However, we often want to test a hypothesis about a population. In the case of a correlation analysis, we then want to know if there is a correlation in the population. For this, we check whether the correlation coefficient in a sample is statistically significantly different from zero. The null hypothesis in the Pearson correlation is the correlation coefficient does not differ significantly from zero. There is no linear relationship. 
and the alternative hypothesis is the correlation coefficient differs significantly from zero. There is a linear relationship. Attention, it is always tested whether the null hypothesis is rejected or not. In our example, we could have the research question, is there a correlation between age and salary in the British population? To find out, we draw a sample and test whether in this sample the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero. The null hypothesis then is, there is no correlation between salary and age in the British population. And the alternative hypothesis? There is a correlation between salary and age in the British population. Whether the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero based on the sample collected can be checked using a t-test, where r is the correlation coefficient and n is the sample size. A p-value can then be calculated from the test statistic t. If the p-value is less than the specified significance level, which is usually 5%, then the null hypothesis is rejected, otherwise it is not. But what about the assumptions for a Pearson correlation? Here we must distinguish whether we just want to calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient or whether we want to test a hypothesis. To calculate the Pearson correlation coefficient, only two metric variables need to be present. Metric variables are, for example, a person's weight, a person's salary or electricity consumption. The Pearson correlation coefficient then tells us how large the linear relationship is. If there is a non-linear relationship, we cannot tell from the Pearson correlation coefficient. However, if we want to test whether the Pearson correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero, the two variables must also be normally distributed. If this is not given, the calculated test statistic t or the p-value cannot be interpreted reliably. If you like, you can of course calculate a correlation analysis online with DataTab. Just copy your data into this table and click on the Hypotheses or Correlation tab. If you now click on the two metric variables, a Pearson correlation will be calculated automatically. If you don't know exactly how to interpret the results, you can also just click on Summary in Words. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.